Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, my computer chess championship has started with Leela Zero and the Torch chess engine, I am going to show you my recent game, which I played today in the bullet championship against Torch, I will share the chess opening tactics and strategies that I employed in the game, where I sacrificed my rook, this game will be incredible, and you will be very glad to watch this video, so stay tuned until the end, I started the game with knight f3, and we have d5 d4, where I can play casual moves and played c4 in the following moves, c6 follows in the game by torch, where he can play the symmetrical variation, where rook to c8 can arrive to get access to this file with the idea of playing e6 or moving the bishop out to f5, the knight goes here, and we have a6, this a6 move plan is very formidable because whenever you do center exchanges on the d5 square, this a6 pawn will protect the b5 square from any invasion. My d4 pawn is blocking the dark square bishop's diagonal, so it cannot swing into these dark squares, and that means black's position will be very healthy, and both sides have the open c file. Alright, going back to the game, I didn't capture the pawn, instead, we have e3, and the bishop moves out to f5 to gain control over the diagonal, the queen goes to the b3 square, where it is attacking the pawn, if black dares to capture the pawn on c4, I will capture it back, and with the formation of a bishop and queen battery, I can attack the pawn here, where knight to e5 or knight to g5 can be possible, also, my queen is protecting the b6 square, where the queen cannot invade, and by playing knight to a4. I can get access to this square with c5, that is the reason why torch immediately considered b5, after the pawn exchange occurred, torch could have captured the pawn with the c-pawn, but if he captured it with the knight on d5, he is attacking my knight, but the problem for torch is that I have two central pawns, which I can just push forward, and that's what I played in the game, knight to e5 follows in the game to attack the pawn, and torch is facing many difficulties because he is not enlightened. Many players here might consider e6 because it looks like a natural move, but hold on, I can strike back with g4, putting pressure on the bishop, after the bishop moves, bishop to g2 will arrive to get access to this diagonal, bishop d6 might look very crazy, but here comes e4 and after the knight exchange, both sides will castle, you can see that by castling, I have the g4 move already, where I can play f4 and h4 together to create pressure on the king side because I have my queen's diagonal. And the bishops have open diagonals, this position will be very healthy and advantageous for me. Going back to the position, Torch didn't play any natural kind of move, instead, he played a tactic with bishop to e6, bishop to e6 does create an attack on the queen indirectly, where knight takes e3 can be possible on the next move, therefore, I immediately considered e4 to attack the knight, here, many players might consider knight takes c3 because it is a very natural move to do, but the problem for black is that your dark square bishop is very passive. You have to play g7 to activate the bishop through this diagonal, meanwhile, I can play f4 and f5, bring out my bishop, castle, and this position will be very advantageous because I will get the advanced pawn structure with advanced ideas and traps. So, going back to the position, we discovered that knight takes knight is a very bad choice, that's why Torch just moved his knight back to the b6 square to control these light squares, where g6 can be possible to develop the bishop through this diagonal, the queen moves back to the d1 square to get access to this diagonal, where queen to h5 can be possible to attack the pawn on the f7 square, here, I can also play f4 and f5 to create some dominance over the board. Black is trying to create protection on the h5 square from any queen invasion, a few moves later, you can see that black is attacking through this diagonal with the bishop, and the knight is trying to dominate over the light squares, but hold on, I am shocked with the world chess champion, world computer chess champion, and, at the same time, I am the god of chess, that's why I played f4 because I have no fear, I made my three central pawns very active, no matter if you play a short side castle or not. I will push forward my kingside pawns to invade you, my Alexander army can defeat you anyhow because there is the possibility of opening up the rook file, the knight is invading there. I will get the dark square open diagonal, the queen can go there, and my knight can go to the d5 square, or I can break open the center with d5, 
my piece combinations will be very good and surprising, and black will face tremendous problems. That's why many players might consider going to c7 to protect the pawn from the knight attack, and at the same time, they are threatening to play knight to d7 to attack my knight on the e5 square, but it is a very bad choice. The way you are playing your game is very suspicious and passive, therefore, I can immediately strike in the center by playing d5, and after the exchange, the rook will go to the c1 square to get access to this diagonal, where I am attacking the b5 pawn, after the queen moves, I will play g4 to again put pressure on the bishop, and your bishop will have to do something, my bishop can go to the g2 square, and in a few moves, you can see that my light square bishop will dominate the board. Knight to c4 may err in the game, which is the best move. And then I will capture the knight first, after the exchange, I will castle to secure my light square bishop, where it will attack the queen and rook simultaneously on the board with the idea of playing d6. You can see that with the bishop's sword fighting together, your rook will be demolished, and your queenside pieces are just very passive, they are like unemployed men staying at home in their thirties without any income, therefore, queen takes b2 might be considered by many players. But black's position is just over because there is d6, and how can you protect your rook? There is no way to protect it in this position, black's position is just over. So, going back to the position, we discovered that any natural kind of move would be a very bad choice, such as queen to c7, that's why Torch played castling in his dark room, where he was crying because he didn't see anything lighting up his pathway after the queen move, here, I played f5, immediately attacking the kingside, if you dare to capture my pawn, that would be very good because I can push my pawns all the way to the h6 square, and I can even play g4, the bishop moves back to the home square. Where knight to d7 can be played to attack the knight, we have bishop to f4, putting pressure on the queen indirectly, where knight takes g6 can arrive to create a tactic, the queen moves, and we have h4 finally, where h5 is a threat. Many players might consider knight to d7, knight to d7 is a very good choice, by the way, because after I play h5, you can see my pawns will be just attacking your g6 pawn, I can play g4, join my queen here, and my knights are very active, there is a possibility of opening up the rook file, the bishop can go to the d3 square, and this position would be just over for black, one move ago, knight to d7 was not actually considered by torch because he knows the vulnerabilities behind that move. That's why he played g takes f5. And here, many players might think of considering e takes f5 because if your opponent slaps you, you might slap them back, that's the nature of humans, but, hold on, I am the god of chess, I know everything before you, I will play h5, I am not interested in your pawn, I will play h6, and if black dares to capture the pawn on the e4 square, thinking it is a free pawn, hold on, there is knight takes e4, that knight will dominate the board, after knight to d7 happens on the board to attack the knight. I will play h6, attacking the bishop, and after the exchange occurs, black will face tremendous problems, if black dares to play e6, I will get the f6 square for my knight, where queen to f2 and g3 can be possible to attack the queen, and also, I have the threat of playing knight to g5 and attacking the pawn on the h7 square, that's my beautiful tactic that I will apply in my game, therefore. Black might think of considering f6 to open up the rook's file and create some breathing room for the king, but, hold on, there is e6, forcing the knight to move and after knight to e5 and all the exchanges occur, there is knight to g5 that will come, and you can see that with the knight and queen combination, I am attacking the pawn on h7, and even if you dare to consider rook to f6, it does not matter because there is queen takes check, and queen to h8 will lead to checkmate, the game will be over. And you will have to pack your bag, cry, and tell your mom that you cannot defeat stockfish. So, going back to the voiceover, we discovered that pawn takes e4 is a very bad choice, that's the reason why black here played b4, torch is trying to lighten up on the board, but here, I played a very gangster move, I said, you want my knight. Just take it, it is my gift to you, 
Rook to h3 followed in the game, and here, if you dare to capture the knight on the c3 square, then you have to cry because I have rook to g3, gaining access to the g-file, and after the king moves, I can even sacrifice my rook on the g7 square, look, you are trying to capture my pieces, and I am giving up all the pieces that I have, that's the difference between you and me, that's why you are just an inferior chess player, and I am superior to all chess players. After king takes rook, I will play another sacrificing, move, bishop to h6 check, what a brilliant move it is because after you capture it, there is queen to c1 check, and after queen to g6, followed by the king moving, h6 will arrive with the idea of checkmating you on g7, therefore, after the rook moves, I will play knight takes f7, and that will lead to checkmate, and that's the game you will face, checkmate. So, going back to the reason, we discovered that pawn takes knight is a very bad choice, that's the reason why Torch here considered knight to d7. He is trying to protect his position, therefore, knight e2 follows in the game, and here we have c5, c5 is a very tricky move because black is trying to create some dominance over the board, over the center, therefore, after rook g3 happens, the king moves, and here I played a 4000 elo, brilliant move, even I think if Kesh played with the white pieces against Ding Liren in the exact same position, Kesh might think of considering rook takes g7. And the chess community would be shocked by seeing this move because it is a brilliant rook sacrifice, and Levy would get another opportunity to yell in the chess community, rook sacrifice. Because after black captures the rook, there is bishop to h6 check, of course, but I didn't play bishop h6 check, I first captured the pawn on the c5 square, creating pressure on the knight, we have captured and recaptured, and f6 on the board, and here you can think a little bit for a moment and pause the video, what is the best move that white should play in this position. Noticing that the bishop and the knight are hanging at the same time, my pawn on e4 is also hanging, I can capture the pawn on the f5 square, the king is ruining there, therefore, noticing all of this, I decided to play h6, checking the black king, and here, of course, black can capture the pawn. But the problem for black is that his king's position will be very exposed, without wearing any clothes or pants on live media, that's why he has to hide his face in a gutter on the h8 square, and we have c6 on the board, attacking the queen, and you can see that the queen is facing malaria, she also has to hide her face, and after bishop to d4 happens in the game, attacking the knight, we have the queen moving, and then queen to c5, after capturing the pawn. You can see that both pawns are trying to dominate black's position, and that is queen to g7, if I get the opportunity to play that, I will play it, that's a hilarious move. So, in this position, we have a knight move, and some chess dances later, you can see that my king is still staying on the home square, my king didn't play any castling. The rook will go wherever necessary, and a few moves later, you can see that we have rook to d1 and b3 on the board, torch created my double b pawns, and that is the plan, so, I cannot make any advancements of the pawns, we have queen to h2 to attack the pawn on h6, and a few moves later, you can see that we have bishop to f2, my rook, bishop, and queen are joining to attack the knight, and the dark square bishop is doing a very good job there. I have my passed pawn, and that's the grace and power of the god of chess, I can defeat anyone, even if thousands of torchlights fight against me, I can defeat all of them because I am the sunlight, now, we have e6 on the board because at this point, the bishop cannot save the knight, the queen also cannot save the knight, so, rook to d8 is not possible, therefore, an alternative move is to play knight to c7, this is a very bad choice because I can capture the pawn on e7, attacking the knight, and my bishop, pair will just dominate the board. So, let me share a motivational quote in sudden with you. In a few months, your life will be completely different, keep working for your goals and watch as your dream life unfolds. So, in this position, rather than moving the knight back, black here decided to sacrifice the pawn himself on e6 and played knight to e7, he is trying to stop my pawn promotions, and here, I played a very brilliant move, can you guess what brilliant move I played here? Try to pause the video and figure it out, we have rook to d7, 
and this is the brilliant move that I played because it forces you to capture my rook, and if you dare to capture my rook, then well done, I will capture your bishop back, attack the knight with a tempo, and c7 will come with the promotion of a new queen, and this position will be just over for you. So, going back to our position, we discovered that bishop takes rook is a very bad choice, and torch is facing malaria in his position, he has nothing to do, finally, he sacrificed his knight, and you can see that my king is well protected by my pieces, everything is well protected on my king's side, and that's why we are just growing our pieces, I mean, we are just developing our pieces, we have bishop to d4 to attack the rooks, both rooks are under attack, and a few moves later, we are trying to eliminate all of the pieces, and finally, at the end of the day, I have an extra knight, this is a completely winning endgame for me, like Kesh and Ding's final game, where Kesh brilliantly defeated Ding Liren, and finally, I checkmated Torch's chess engine, Torch's chess engine is the number 2 chess engine, you know, I am the number 1 chess engine, I hope you enjoyed the game very much, if so, then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best. Bye bye take care and see you soon.